Hello, my name is Jacqueline Polliff, and today I'm going to demonstrate how to remove an action block from a pedal harp. Uh, this is really a preparatory step to some types of repair, and I'm just going to be focusing on this step, showing how to remove the action block, and then also how to put it back on the harp, uh, but I won't be focusing on any in-depth types of repair. So this way, if you need to remove the action block, uh, you'll be able to find a concise overview of how to do that step. The action block might seem insignificant because it is just this small piece of wood right here. But even though it's so small, actually it's at a critical point on the harp because inside the column, the pedal rods are coming up and then right here inside, they connect to the action which runs all along the neck of the harp. So when it's in place, the action block is protecting that juncture, uh, but for some types of repair, for example, if you're changing a pedal rod, you need access to that junction in order to make connections and adjustments. Removing the action block is actually really straightforward. There's simply a screw on the front and then another around the back. And all you have to do is remove both of those screws and then you can take the entire wooden piece right out. But as with many uh, repairs on the harp, most people have not done this before and they tend to be quite nervous about uh, messing around with anything on the harp. So I will just walk through everything step by step to make sure that it's clear and that if you're doing this, hopefully you feel quite confident about it. The only tool that we need today is just a screwdriver to match those two screws. So I have here a, a small flathead screwdriver, uh, just an eighth inch, although of course you can double check the size of your screw to whatever screwdrivers you have to make sure that they match well. From this angle, you can see the action block a bit more clearly. It's just this piece of wood right here, just a few inches long. At the top here, it gives way to um, open air. At the bottom, um, it tucks down into the column. And as I mentioned, there are two screws holding it in place, uh, one on either side of the harp. So that action block is what we are about to remove. So first we need to determine which screw corresponds with the action block. And you can see that we have a couple of black screws and then a couple of uh, gold screws that really blend in with the metal. So some people just get a bit confused by all of the choices. But the easiest way to think about it is to imagine uh, where the action block is. So it just runs in a little curve right along here and it's quite thin. It's not a very thick piece of wood. So this lowest screw, this bottom uh, small black screw here is the one that is holding it in place. So we will go ahead and remove the screw using the uh, flat head screwdriver. And this is just the same as removing um, any screw. All we're gonna do is twist to the left over and over until the screw pops out. And you can see I'm right next to this lowest um, C string. If that's really in your way, you could um, loosen the string just to give yourself a little bit more room to work with. <laughs> I bumped it a little bit there. But there we go, just twisting around. And then of course, removing the screw, you don't want to drop it or have it rattle down the harp. And then you'll want to put it somewhere quite safe so that it's ready to be put back into the action block. Here we are with a view of the back of the harp, ready to identify the second and final screw that holds the action block in place. And this uh, sometimes can be even a bit more overwhelming than the front of the harp with so many choices. Uh, but this screw is just opposite of the one that we already removed and we can use the same approach so the action block runs right along here this little curve so the screw in question is this one this small black one quite uh, low on the metal plate and close to the edge again we'll just remove this screw uh, the standard way you would remove any screw so we'll go ahead and twist to the left there it goes around and around until the screw is fairly well out. And then I'm gonna switch and use my fingers just so I don't have to worry about dropping this. Whoa, very tiny screw. All right, I caught it. There it is, our second screw removed from the action block. Now that the screws are removed, I'm just going to reach up and give a little gentle pull to remove the action block. Uh, it's made to fit quite snugly 
So usually it won't fall out upon removing the screws, but it comes out very easily at this point. And usually all you can see of it is this curve, but here's the rest of the piece. Kind of interesting to see the shape and everything. Uh, this is just a little bit of tape that I think the, the harp maker put on there. So that is our action block all removed. I wanted to show a bit of the harp behind where we removed the action plate. So up here you can see uh, part of the action link. Those help control all of the discs that rotate on the harp. And then if you turn your gaze a little bit lower, here we have um, a piece of felt. I'm just going to use my fingers to pull that out a little bit. And behind that we have the um, point where the pedal rods connect to the action couplers. So the pedal rods are the uh, smaller uh, cylinders down low and then up above them a little bit larger are the action couplers. And when you're changing a pedal rod you need to access this particular point in order to screw the new pedal rod into the action coupler which is a quite a delicate task and luckily not one that we are doing today. So I'll just go ahead and uh, tuck the felt back into its position. Once you've completed whatever repair or adjustment you need to make within the harp, it's time to put the action block back into place. And that's quite straightforward. We're just going to reverse everything we did. So the first step will be putting the action block back into its spot, and then we'll add both of the screws. And um, in putting it back in, one thing to be aware of is that it is not uh, perfectly symmetrical. Um, so it could be upside down <laughs> and the way to check that is the uh, bottom part has this nice flat edge that rests right in there in the column and the top part is a bit more tapered. So we'll go ahead and put that flat edge into the column and then slide it all up and then you just want to make sure that it's really um, flush against the curve of the metal plate and that way your screws will align with the hole in the action block. So replacing the first screw is simple enough. I'm just going to uh, pop it in and give it a few turns to the right. And then I'll use my screwdriver, still turning to the right, to tighten it up. Uh, we just want it to be nice and snug in there. So there we are. The first screw is back in place. And now we're going to go ahead and replace the second screw on the front of the harp. So I will just give it a couple of, uh, hopefully I will just give it a couple of little twists there to get it started. Ah, there we go. And then once it is in a little ways, I'll switch to my screwdriver and screw it in um, snugly the rest of the way. Ah. A little tricky. Again, just trying to avoid the C-string as much as possible. So there we have our second screw all back into the action block. So here we are with the action block all back in place. And whether you have a Lion and Healy style 30 like this one, or quite a different type of pedal harp. Hopefully this has covered enough information so that you feel comfortable doing this at home. Good luck to you.